Builder Dude 35 here, and today I'm going to be discussing some very important details about the EV3 gyro sensor. Just recently I had had an email conversation with Lawrence Valk, sorry if I mispronounce your name. Anyway, he is a LEGO Mindstorms MCP, and he's also very knowledgeable about these gyro sensors. And he shared some very important information about the inner workings of the gyro sensor that I felt that I need to share to you. So I'm going to be conveying his notes to you. And this pertains to anywhere gyros are used with EV3s, as like including FLL. So the first thing he told me, and basically the focus of the conversation, is that the most important thing to know about these gyro sensors is what they measure, or rather what they don't measure. Now this I found very surprising, and I'm sure you will too, and it's that gyro sensors actually can't me measure angles, at least by themselves. What a gyro sensor is actually designed to you is measure angular velocity. That means how fast something uh, that the gyro is attached to is rotating in degrees per second. And we get this value using the EV3's gyro rate mode, which tells you the how fast the gyro is rotating or spinning in degrees per second. And this is essentially what a gyro is made to do. Uh, measure angular velocity, not necessarily angle on its own. So if a gyro can't measure angles, then how does it arrive at an angle value when it when you put it in angle mode? Well, he used this example to explain it to me. Basically, when you have the gyro sensor, it measures an angular velocity, we already know that. So let's say you're rotating at 18 degrees per second for a total of 10 seconds, and then boom, based on some mathematical calculations, you can calculate that you rotated 180 degrees, right? Actually, not so fast, because this measurement has a lot of uncertainty to it. The first part is that we don't know where we actually started before we were rotating. To do this, you would need a compass, which tells you absolute heading in degrees, or you would need some kind of sensor in whatever turntable that you were on, or like the ground or something, as a reference point. The second thing is, you don't know that you were rotating at a constant rate of 18 degrees per second. Maybe when you were, weren't looking, you sped up and you were 19 degrees per second or 17 degrees per second, and it varied somewhere in between. Uh, the third uh, thing that contributes to the uncertainty is that the, the resolution of the sensor, if it tells you that you're rotating at 18 degrees per second, alright, that's great. But what if it was more like 18.3 degrees per second? Now that extra 0.3 doesn't seem like a lot of error at first, but when you figure that if you're rotating for 10 seconds, this adds up to being 183 degrees of rotation instead of 180. And this all adds up to a measurement, an angle measurement that has a lot of uncertainty to it. So let's give a real life FLL example. Let's say you're using your EV3 gyro sensor to measure the turning on your FLL robot. So what you have is your robot rotating at 30 degrees per second for 3 seconds, and this should make a, a perfect 90 degree turn if this were a perfect world. But unfortunately, the gyro's resolution for angle is uh, only to the nearest degree. I'm sorry, that would be angular velocity. So you could actually be traveling at 30.3 degrees per second instead of just 30 flat and instead, now you're making a 91 degree turn instead of a 90 degree turn. One degree doesn't seem like a lot for uh, one turn, but after making a bunch of turns with your FLL robot, you realize that you're, you end up being really far off because the error gets compounded. Now you're probably wondering, if gyros aren't the best at measuring angles, how do robots like Segway robots work? Well, they need outside information to be able to stay upright because the angle value from a gyro is not always reliable. So they get this extra outside information through an accelerometer, which is a sensor that measures the force of gravity, or g-force, on three axes. And this accelerometer provides the extra information that it needs alongside the gyro to make corrections and stay upright. So what's the big takeaway from this video? Well, the thing that I want you to walk away from this video with is that the gyro sensor is not actually a bad sensor. It's just that we're using it for something that it was never really designed to do. It's designed to measure angular velocity, not necessarily a direct angle on its own. And for that reason, since the angle measurement has a lot of uncertainty, Lorenz Valk doesn't actually recommend that you use the gyro sensor to measure the turning on your FLL robot, because you're going to get measurements with a lot of uncertainty. 
However, there are going to be some pretty clever ways that you can integrate a gyro sensor into FLL, just not for turning for FLL robots. Thank you for watching my video this week. Now you understand what the gyro is truly meant to do. And a big thanks to Lawrence Valk for providing all of the information that I needed to make this video. And I'll see you next time with next week's tutorial. Bye!